Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Kizzy Parks, in case this is your first time checking out my channel. It's a pleasure to be here. Unlock. How do we unlock something? So uh, in case you're new here, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks, and I've been awarded well over $70 million in federal government contracts. So I'm here to talk about unlock federal government contracts, strategies for, for securing profitable contracts. So <clears throat> when I first got involved in government contracting, which was 15 years ago, I... I knew that the government bought a lot of things. I knew they bought a lot of training and development. I just didn't really, hello, Lorraine. I just had no idea how to go about winning any of this work. And what was interesting was what I'm about to share with you. I had, hello, Mac Academy. I had a friend who worked at NASA. And one day she was like, Kizzy, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And I, I was just like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? And um, she's like, you know, they just awarded this contract to this company and like, we could be doing this work. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She's like, they're not really doing anything special. And at this time she was working at NASA, but it was like an internship. And so I was like, like dumbfounded, like, really? She's like, yeah, like she's, she was going really deep into her experience with this contractor. And I, it, a light bulb went off. I'm like, wow, you, you don't have to be spectacular. You just have to be taking action and doing something that's good enough. So while my friend had these views about them, I was evaluating them based on her views. In reality, they were winning because they were taking action. And that's what's key to federal government contracting is you taking action. There's a whole multitude of opportunities out there. It's, are you going to take action? And for those of you who are just joining, and thank you all for just joining. My name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I go by Kizzy Parks. I've been awarded well over $70 million in government contracts. I am here in my second home here in Michigan. I got the lion there because we're going to take over the division. So let me just take a look at the comments. Cheryl Brown, what I've been been watching you. Have you live? Awesome. Thank you. And also, please feel free to ask questions. I would love to answer your questions. I'm not really sure how long I'll be on here tonight because somebody thought it was a good idea to eat a bunch of fried food, and now I feel horrible. So <laughs> I got way to lose. I'm over here like, let me have some French fries. Like, you know, but it, it's, but it speaks to government contracting. We know to go to Sam.gov, but I'm going to go on Instagram. I'm going to check out BET Awards. You know, and I totally get it. You know, I totally, totally get it. And also... Judah Worldwide, thank you so much. Finally caught you, hope all's well. It is Edward Croft. What's up, Edward Croft? Everything by John. Kiss it! Man, I'm going hard. Started back last week. It's getting to be a lot. Getting several posts and emails back from sub. What's your advice on that? Okay, cool. I'm going to hop into that in just one second. Okay, awesome. This is awesome. So I'm talking about how to unlock federal government contract strategies for securing profitable contracts. So we got a lot to talk about y'all, despite the crappy food I ate. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. So one other, uh, sorry about that, everybody. I'm getting my knees situated. Thing about government contracting and that has to do with those of you who may be new. And let's say you're like, I don't know what to do. I got a cage code. I don't know what to do. Or I don't know who to even approach. Am I even able to get a contract? I heard you have to have two years of experience. 
You do not need two years experience. You don't even technically need to have a cage code unless you want to prime. So I want to share something with you all that's kind of late breaking information. And I will put that here in the chat. Okay. So the SBA, the Small Business Administration, just made a massive update. And this is really important because this is one way to unlock government contracts. You can now have your capability statement, which is like your marketing one pager in government contracting terms. You can have that added to your small business dynamic search profile. So this link that I shared with everyone, it kind of walks you through that process. It literally does. It, it gives you the one, two, three, four, four steps on how to go about doing that. And this is really vital. And let me tell you why. And again, for anyone who's just showing, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I go by Kizzy Parks, and I've been awarded well over $70 million in federal government contracts. I actually have 100 people working for me right now. So I was meeting, I just recently met with the Air Force, Tinker Air Force Base. And they went over my dynamic small business profile. One of them, they're like, this one's great. I don't have any feedback. The other one, they're like, oh, you need to put a lot in there which I knew because it's a joint venture. Point is, this is what they said. Three women on the call. They said, we look for your NAICS codes. We look for your keywords on your dynamic small business profile. And I bet for some of you, you've never heard of it. If you've never heard of it, type yes in the, in the chat box. If you've never heard of this before, type yes. Type yes if you've never heard of it before. And it's okay if you haven't typed yes if you've never heard of it before. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming forward. Maybe the rest of you have, and that's okay if you haven't. But if you've never heard of it, type yes. And as you're typing, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to share the link with all of you. And thank you all. And I will answer the qu your questions too. And that's something exciting on the horizon to share with you all. I think it's exciting. I hope you all find it as exciting as I do. So the link I just shared with everyone, this provides like a snapshot of your business. It has your contact information, your summary. It has all of this information that you provide it as well as what's in your SAM.gov profile. This is another key to unlock contracts. Because as I shared, the Air Force, they're looking for your NAICS code. They're looking for your keywords. Plus, here's a bonus strategy, y'all. So in that link that I just shared, when you go on there, you'll see that they ask you questions. They have um, ways that you can look for companies. You can look for vendors by location, certification, self-certifications, NAICS code, capability, size, cap there, there's more options here than there are like sugary cereals at Walmart, okay? So for those of you that maybe you don't know where to begin or you just want to subcontract and you're like, how do I subcontract? How do I do something like that? This is where you go. You go to that dynamic small business website and you can put in the NAICS code, you can drill down. Maybe you look for, uh, let's give you, let me give everybody a quick example. Perhaps you look for a business in Georgia that is tribal and it has a certain NAICS code. Let's say the training NAICS code, bam, it'll pull up a bunch for you. And it's easy. It's great to use. Also, I'm probably going to play around with different streaming software. So uh, I may start using software where I can stream um, outside of here and share my screen with you all. But I'm just playing around. So just I appreciate your patience and flexibility with me. 
This is an on tap resource. Most people, they don't talk about it. That's why you don't hear anybody else talking about it because they don't know about it because, you know. So I'm going to go to the questions. And for those of you just joining and for you watching the restream, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. Got my hair up today. It's like chilly here in Michigan. I feel like it's winter. It is, it is cold, y'all. It is probably, what is the temperature? 61 degrees. That's winter for me. It's summer. Why I should be sweating and like have not like not have a turtleneck on. So I've been working over $70 million in government contracts. I go by Kizzy and you know I'm here to help make sure you have all the tools that you need to find bid and win profitable contracts. That's right, Mac. It is cold. So I'm gonna go up to these questions. Okay, great. So everything by John. It's getting to be a lot going, getting several quotes and emails back from subs. Uh, yeah. And it's also hard not to chase your dreams. So it is hard because you're relying on somebody else to tell you what it's going to cost. And I know that there are many people out there that talk about that. Yeah, they're the expert. Talk to them. Get the pricing from them. But then the con is now you're at their mercy. So everything by John, it's about ask yourself, what kind of work are you going after? What kind of work are you getting quotes from? Is there any way that you could cut out doing that or minimize that? Is there somebody else you could have do that? Is there somebody you could hire for $4 an hour in another country to do it? I don't know. What I do know is follows. Government contracting is not a get rich quick cash grab. Now I got a Maserati. I got a Rolls Royce SUV. It is not that type of a space whatsoever. Counter to what some say, because here's the deal. It is easy to win one contract. That's easy. That's just like selling something. I promise you. Make something and say, hey, I'm going to sell some cookies. I'm sure somebody's going to buy your cookies. Then what? That's not a business. If Amazon sold one book, is that a business? It's not. A business is you're constantly getting revenue. You're putting in a dollar of expenses and theoretically getting back $33 in profit. That's what this is all about. And that's what's key. So I have some more questions for you all because we're talking about, you know, how to unlock um, federal government contracting. That's what this is all about. Excuse me. So we have some more question. Um, okay. What's your consulting fee, Robert? So I'm making a lot of changes and that's why I said I have some big announcements. I have a lot going on. This is what I suggest. If you, you are doing less than $10,000 a month in revenue. I suggest you sign up for my challenge. That's what I suggest that you do. I'm going to drop my link. It was not my intention to drop my link. So I actually have to find my link for you all or my challenge. Uh, so it's going to be next month. It's five days. You are going to get 10 times your investment in my challenge. So I highly suggest that you do it. And I'm giving y'all only the VIP link because y'all are VIPs. It's late night on a Monday and you're here during my live listening to this beauty right here. So I know y'all don't want an executive seat, but if you do want an executive seat, I can understand that too. So this is what I suggest that you do. Sign up for my challenge. Uh, there's some more things here, and I'll share that executive uh, seat here in a second. What's my opinion on chat GPT? I love chat GPT. I use it all the time. I actually just paid for uh, chat GPT. And also share, like, and subscribe. Share, like, and subscribe. I heard definitely during lives it really helps the algorithm, and I really, really appreciate it. Another question from Daniel. Daniel. Hi, Casey Hope as well. I'm curious to know if there are classes or some resources to learn about writing good proposals. That's an excellent question. So 
I cover it in an existing program and I'm actually, let me know what you all think about this. I would like to create a proposal writing club. And I'm gonna let you know right now, if it, it, the cost is $25,000 for an entire year. So that's not much money in reality when you think about what you're gonna get out of it. You win one contract for $100,000, you've already repaid yourself. Oh my gosh, wow, I got a top chat. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, wow. Oh, thank you so much, everything by John. Today's my birthday. I got an e email back from a CEO. I think he's trying to warn me. Let's see. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and ping me if I can, however I can be of help. Oh my gosh. And I got, I'm like so excited. I feel like I just won a million dollars. I love this. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so glad I came on here. I was like, I got to come on here. I'm trying to do math and my brain got, see, this is what happens when you eat fried food and my brain's all smushed up. Okay. So it's about 2000 a month. Okay. I had to do some math. You know, I was like, Ooh, okay. So one, and let me know your thoughts. You know, if you think that's crazy, that's fine. So proposal writing club is one thing I'm looking to put together, but this is not about my proposal writing club. This is about your question. Okay. I'm going to give you real talk. I'm, I'm Daniel, everybody here. This is not about my proposal writing club. Let me tell you the real deal about proposal writing. Number one, you must understand what it takes to win, period. Whether it's state, local, federal, you got to understand what it takes to win. Number two, you increase your win rate by them knowing you, know, like, and trusting you. All day, every day, increase your win rate. Think about us. I love Amazon. Little known fact. I don't think I've ever shared this before, ever. <laughs> Several years ago, back when I was married, when I was Kizzy Dominguez, uh, I somehow was invited by Amazon to serve on a research panel. And we met a couple of times. I think I participated for six months. I was paid in the form of Amazon gift cards. And I was asked a variety of questions. One time I was asked about, this was back when we had a, a fire stick and I had to take pictures of the fire stick where it was located on the television. And uh, I answered all these different questions about my buying and spending. And there was even like a mock device that they had me review and things of that nature. And all that did was strengthen my desire to only buy from them. That's all it did. It really increased my knowing, liking, and trusting of them because I was able to like peek behind the curtain and I knew, oh my gosh, they hired XYZ company to conduct this research. They invited me. I don't know why. And it was really cool to be part of that for six months. So for your question, Daniel, the proposal writing, it is a big piece, but the knowing how to win, having that relationship with them, with that agency, puts you in that Amazon category. That is why we buy eggs, T-shirts, hair ties, kids toys, diapers. We buy all the books. We buy all these things from Amazon because we know, like, and trust them. I do cover proposal writing all of the time. Uh, what do I think are some good resources? I'm looking around. I have so many books here. <laughs> oh, excuse me, everyone. Um, The sh so Shipley is a company that is known for proposal writing. It's a resource to look into. It's definitely a resource. But I suggest, and this is for everyone, I'm not getting a kickback. I'm not giving you an Amazon link yet. Do you all hear that yet? This is one of my all time favorite books. And I have a book dropping soon. In case you're new to this, new to the channel, or you're just joining, watching Restream, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I go by Kizzy Parks, been awarded over $70 million in federal government contracts. 
So I have a book coming out soon uh, and you're going to be able to pre-order soon. This book, I adore Joshua Frank because it really breaks down. Look, y'all can see I really use this book. Highlighter, those PhD skills are coming out. All kinds of stuff. Little love notes in here. I got everything. This book breaks down the sales process and it's pivotal because it will then help make additional sense of, oh, that's why they only gave seven days for the deadline for that opportunity. Oh, that's why they sole sourced it. Oh, that it's, it's going to, it's all going to come together like the end of a movie where you're like, oh, it all made sense. That's what's going to happen. So I'm going to look through the questions here. And I love this. I'm so excited. Everything by John. Birthday. Birthday in here. I can think of all those birthday songs. So exciting. Okay. This is exciting. So let's see here. Okay. I shared the link. Mac Leadership Academy. I have a military background with lots of experience in leadership training, facilitation, et cetera, et cetera. What is your recommendation on area to start? I would say, first and foremost, what are you most interested in selling? I know it says you're in the Air Force, you're transitioning. What are you interested in selling? Think about that. What I would do is look into companies, maybe you know them because you're in uniform right now, that you know have government contracts. And maybe through the grapevine, you've heard, oh, yeah, SKNL group, they're really good. They got a lot of contracts here. And look them up. Look, identify companies who are doing what you are interested in doing and see if they have a need either to employ you or for you to be a subcontractor. Because here's the other thing that nobody talks about government contracting, but Kizzy Parks, I'm going to tell you about this. Here's the deal. So I have this friend. And I'm just going to call her Kay. And I got introduced to her through a client site. There was an Air Force member who, he was dating her, but I didn't really know he was dating her. So he was like, hey, I really think you should meet her. She's, you two are very, very similar. And I was like, okay, great. This, why not? And she's also a government contractor. And like me, she, at the time she was an A-Day and I was an A-Day. I've since graduated. And so she is in, she was an IT. She was an A-Day. She was lovely. She was, she's originally from Maryland and she was in the process of like kind of relocating to South Florida. And I was like, oh, this is great because I live in South Florida, right? So the thing that was most intriguing is after college, she ended up working for a government contractor. And I see this often where someone will work for a government contracting company, whether it's a small business, it's a bigger business. Even GovCon Kid, he worked for a woman owned company. And then he has a channel on here, too. You know, I, I think it's really important. I like to share, you know, all kinds of things. So and then there's also been people who I met, like my mentor, she was a or is a retired Navy commander. She ended up getting into government contracting. Sergeant Johnson, I can't but help but call him Sergeant Johnson. He's been retired probably for 10 years now. He was in uniform and transitioned into government contracting. So one of the gateways to unlocking, to unlock government contracts is through sometimes you work for a government contractor to learn how are they doing these things. You work for the federal government, whether you could transition from uniform to a GS position. There are all these different opportunities out there. And what they all have in common is this. And this is why my friend Kay really stood out. She took what she observed, what she learned, and what she knew she could do better. 
And that's how she built a multi-million dollar business from it. That's key. And that's so important to being able to unlock contracts. So definitely do that. Look into companies that are doing what you're wanting to do. We have, um, <laughs> Mac was like, that's cold. I know my comment was cold right earlier. Lorraine, I'm starting in the post-construction cleanup area. I don't have experience in it directly, but experience in cleaning services. I know, look, I'm like the, hi, how are you guys doing? So, <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm trying to lean in and I leaned in a little too much. Uh, I read a post you had on LinkedIn offering free, uh, but don't have experience in cleaning service. I read a post you have on LinkedIn offering free. Okay, Lorraine, just clarify. I'm not sure what's the LinkedIn offering free. So just clarify for me in the comments. Okay, so post-construction cleanup. What you can do is identify companies who have contracts in the construction cleanup area. It's a great place to start. Great, great place to start. And I'm going to, I think I can repost this link. You can locate them on the dynamic small business search. I just posted it again and see if they have a need for a subcontractor. That's a really good way to go about this. You can also bid on opportunities, even if you don't have experience, because it's not always about experience. A gentleman who I'm mentoring, I helped him bid on a tree trimming opportunity. His bid for was for a little less than $2 million. It was not based on whether or not you had experience. It was based on the lowest price. The lowest price ended up being like 1.4. Yeah. And he was just going to sub all that work out anyways. And I'm sure the company who won it for 1.4, they're going to sub it out anyways, too. That's what most people do. You know, I want, I want you to think about something. Think of any kind of event. It could be a sporting event. It could be a music event. Like here in Michigan, they just had Electric Forest. There's Essence Festival. There's BET Awards. There's all type of events going on. So I recently attended a Lizzo concert. And at that concert, I noticed people had different kind of tops on. This was in uh, Chicago at the United Center. There was somebody who made sure I didn't have any weapons. They had a different kind of uniform, different top. There was someone who scanned my phone. They had a different top, a different uniform. There were the people taking your orders for food and giving you the food. They had a different top and uniform on. There were people that helped you help direct you or ushers to your seats, a different uniform and top on. More than likely, the United Center subcon and there was security. And not only security for the United Center, I also noticed like Lotto performed, she had her own security. Uh, so United Center, right? So the concert was there. One of the vendors several of the vendors provide the food. So then the people providing the food, they have people then working the concession stands who might be employees, they might be 1099. You have security. Security, who has that contract, may subcontract that out. So this happens time and time and time and time and time again. So it's a good place to get into whether you have experience or not. So you can be one who um, benefits from this. Let's see. Scrooge McDonald's. <laughs> Scrooge McDonald's. McDonald's rich uncle money bags. Wow, I love that. I love that name. Yeah, the cool part does suck. It really does suck. Okay, Miss Kizzy. Okay, Larry. I like it. Miss Kizzy. Larry from Naptown. Okay, what's most important? Having the right NAICS code or the right mentor? 
the right mentor and the right mindset. Mindset is, sometimes I say it's 85%. Sometimes I say it's 90%. It's at least 80% of this. Every single day, it's mindset. There are times where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I luckily haven't had this of recent, but there have been times where I'm like, why am I doing this? Why don't I just have a regular job and I don't have to worry about doing anything? And I and I remember that. There was a time about a couple of years ago, I, I really was in that space deep. I was crying a lot. I was just like doubting myself. I'm like, why am I doing this? And I remember somebody close to me was like, because you're not like everybody else, Kizzy. And I was like, okay, I can kind of accept that. And they said, do you want an ordinary life? Is that what you want? Is that how you want to live? You want to live like everybody else and have this job that you go to and that you may not like and that you have to commute to? He was like, do you want to commute? Do you want to drive this Miami traffic? Do you want to go to a job? Is that what you want? Have an ordinary life? Is that it? It's like, okay, I guess I got to put my big girl pants on. Because that's not how Arthur Parks raised me. <laughs> that's not how my dad raised me. And, but it's there. And because when it comes to government contracting and being an entrepreneur, it's exciting. It's exhilarating. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. And you can just see it and feel it. It's $500 billion that's there. But then at the same time, it's like you got to put in that work. And that's what most won't talk about. And it's not just you putting in the work, it's that mindset of you knowing that it's going to turn into something. So you have to have faith. You have to manifest and continue growing that. When I first started out 15 years ago, and my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks for anyone joining, been awarded over $70 million in government contracts. When I first started out, 15 years ago, at least three of us were given the opportunities to subcontract at Patrick Air Force Base, now Space Force. I am the only one who took that opportunity and turned it into several multi-million dollar companies. And I know a large part of it was mindset. And of course, we all have different desires. Not everybody wants to do that. So this is not a fault on those people. It's just about what sets what sets you apart. I had the same education as them. We actually all went to the same school. We all provided something very similar to Patrick Air Force Base. But I knew, I was like, I'm going to take this and run with it. So that mindset is key and having the right, and, and I would say, I would add an S as in Sierra, Larry, it's mentors. Like I have several mentors and I'm not shy about it because there might be some of these mentors you don't like. And that's cool if y'all don't like them. That's that's fine. You know, like I have Grant Cardone as a mentor. I have Myron Golden as a mentor. Um, I have a, a coach who I use. That's the only thing I really keep private because we talk about everything. I have a coach. Um, I have a YouTube mentor, Daryl Eves. I have a ton of mentors. I even have a coach for my weight loss. Her name is Brittany. She's amazing. I think it's super important to have mentors, to have coaches. Here's why. Because everyone excels in something different. I'm not going to ask Brittany, my fitness coach, about money. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to ask my family. <laughs> so, you know, so that's why the mentor piece is really, really important. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to keep going through this. And thanks for being here with me. I really appreciate every each and every one of you. Okay. Let's see. What's your thoughts? Okay, yo biz. Yo biz. Yo buzz. What's your thoughts on reading books on how to win government contracts? It's super important. It's super, super important. Like, this is one of my favorite books. I have, I, since I'm here in Michigan, I have books all over the place. I don't want to get up during the live stream to go and like rummage through my books. 
So I'll, ha I'll have them up, but I like the Shipley books. I was gifted a book by someone on LinkedIn. Uh, his book is pretty good. I like some of his content. I have some advanced books about more on the law side. It's really important to, thank you so much, Yobas, for putting that in there. It's really important to continuously learn. It's so important because you want to really excel. And then we have uh, Shema Fower or Four. What's the best type of contract to start with if it's my first time? Appreciate your videos. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Okay, great. I'm going to, and I'll make sure I get to all of y'all's questions. I'm not ready to end yet, but I, I can feel I'm getting a little sleepy. And I don't want to be like, eh, then that's not going to be fun. And it's not going to help you. And I'm here to help you find bid and win profitable contracts. So what's the best type of contract to start with? It really depends on what you want to do. If in that, you know, interestingly enough, this is something that brings me pause and here's why. You have a lot out there like, oh, it's so easy, you, you know, use a middleman or just like, you know, there's all these things you can do in government contracting. And I agree that winning a contract is easy, right? So it's about what kind of contract do you want to win? What kind of profit are you interested in? And what are you willing to do? That's what it's about. Because there are contracts on SAM.gov that you would probably have minimal competition, but is it something you want to do? Like, for instance, I love their religious positions. I adore those religious positions, but you may not want to put out a job announcement and staff somebody and have payroll. So maybe you want something on Unison. Oh, look at Shanae. Oh, you're so sweet. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. So you may not want that. You may want something different. Maybe you want a subcontract. So then that way it eliminates marketing, sales, overhead. You don't have to deal with anything. All you got to do is show up to the mic and sing, you know? So it's, and, and it's hard because I know you want like an, a definitive answer. And it's, and it's something I personally struggle with because I don't want to say like, well, you go after lawn care because that's not the answer. I know. And I, and I, I make this face because I know I'm, I'm not giving you what you want because I can't give you what you want. Because I would not be doing you, doing best by you, and I wouldn't be just doing best by me. Because what you're seeking is you're seeking an opportunity. That's really what you're seeking. And that opportunity is through government contracting. And if I'm totally off, Shema, let me know, but I'm sensing that. Like, you're really seeking something. There's something going on. Okay. Okay. And you can um, hear y'all, if you need to reach out, I just, I just like change up my email. I'm so excited. So <laughs> so it's chat at kizzyparks.com. So email me chat at kizzyparks.com. Okay, so, and let me know, Shema, if I'm off. I don't know if you're still on or not, but I may be totally off. I don't think I am. Let's see. Mac Leadership Academy, awesome. And thank you for the information. I'll do that. I love teaching, developing others. Okay, great. So, Mac Leadership, when you're ready to retire, reach out because we're always seeking new facilitators. I mean, seriously, we are always seeking new facilitators. And one of the best ways to know about facilitators is through something like this, because we usually get them through referrals or just people we've always known. So please do that. Cheryl, hey, you're in Michigan. Yay, Cheryl Brown. Okay, I'm getting quotes. I've been asked for a resale license, yet I understand the bid I am after is government and tax exempt. What am I missing? So... People who manufacture different things, they may have, so you have two parts. 
And the question is, is the government asking you for it or is, I'm assuming the government's asking you for it or is the vendor requiring that you get it? Some vendors may have it set up where you have to have this resale license. Sometimes the government wants to make sure you have a resale license. And let me just tell you why. Bootlegging. <laughs> That's why. Because it's so easy to knock off things. So by having that license, it kind of validates, oh, wow, okay, you really are getting the phone cases that we wanted. You really have the life proof and you're not have, or I, I got OtterBox. I used to, oh, I think OtterBox bought life proof. And then it's like, oh, okay, these are the real OtterBox. It's not like OtterBox with like a, a Z or a box with two S's or two X's or something like that. So um, that's, that's what they're, um, that's what they're getting at. So let me let me just quickly go jump it out. Shame on. Okay. So figuring out where to start, where my cage code, I'm calling every day. Like I said, next is my Dodak, and then I can bid on contracts. Next is your Dodak. Okay. Oh, Roseville. Okay, cool. I'm a Muskegon. What's up? What's up? I'm still thinking about having a meetup here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel yeah. Keep keep trying, Shema. I feel it's just something something is there. I don't know how to put it into words. I just I sense something. Y'all have strong intuition, and I'm a master at manifesting. I'm not trying to listen, especially those who are joining. You're like, what is happening? My name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I've been awarded well over seventy million dollars government contracts, and I'm here to help you unlock government contracts. That's what is today's all about, y'all. It's all about how to unlock it, make profitable revenue through federal government contracts. So um, I'm going to keep going. Let's see. Navigation VR videos or VR videos. What is the easiest job to get in what state? I mean, some, some could argue the easiest is to resell something. So for instance, a, a woman had reached out and she won a contract to sell televisions, I believe, to the state of Louisiana. And she ended up buying them online and flipped them to the state of Louisiana. But here's the problem. So was that easy? Who couldn't get televisions, right? Probably every single one of us here could bid on that. But she didn't have the money to buy the televisions. And we're not talking about a thousand televisions. It may have been 20. So easy is kind of like free. You get what you get, right? So I would say to think about it in sense of ease of profit, if it's super profitable, and it's something you enjoy or is super profitable and getting all that profit brings you joy, <laughs> then there you go. That's easy. But there are those situations where a contract may be easy to win. And then you have that, oh, what am I supposed to do? So there's a, a gentleman I coach and he had won a contract for fence parts. And it was a little less than like, $70,000. Maybe it was less than 50,000. He was super excited. He won this contract. He called the vendor. He was ready. He's like, listen, I won this contract. I need these fencing parts delivered to XYZ. And here's what they said. Okay. So which method of payment are you using? And he's like, method of payment? He was like, Kizzy. He calls me. He's like, Dr. Parks. He's like, this is $40,000. I don't have $40,000. I mean, I bankrolled it. It was one thing that I did. Not that I do this for everyone in my different coaching programs, but I did this for him. I bankrolled his purchase. But so winning it, yeah, it's easy. He got, he received quotes. He won it for a fencing uh, contract, but it ended up being challenging because where do you get the $40,000 from? Most of us, I would argue, don't have $40,000 laying around. 
It just isn't something that most people do. I mean, I got $40,000, but I'm saying you understand what I'm getting at. So it's just, you got to weigh the pros and cons when it comes to this. I, I feel like I went a little too deep in that. Let me know. Let me know if you heard that. Type yes. If you felt me on that, please type yes. Okay. Let me go on. I'm going to, okay, let's see. Okay. Lorraine makes sense. Navigation. We're going to sub out. Okay, cool. I got it. Then I say you sub out what you feel most comfortable subbing out. And it's something that you kind of know about, but not something everybody goes after. Don't go after like lawn service and janitorial unless you're ready to really willing to go really low on prices, because we all understand this work and agencies, federal, state, that's how much they value it. Unless it's like, oh, it's this secret location or security clearance is required for the janitorial team. Then it's different. Okay. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. Feelings are real and, and doubt comes out. Job is not to let sink in. Mine says everything. Anytime. Got the easiest job. Wait a minute. Navigation. You can't even answer a question I ask. I mean, I just answered a question you asked. I answered your question. It's all right. We all, y'all got be, got a little patience, especially when you're dealing with federal agencies and state and local. Patience is really key. Yes, quality mentors make us better. I'll be buying any book you recommend. That's good. I apologize, Dr. Parks. Don't worry, pinkies. I don't know what you're apologizing for, but I'll take it. How do I sign up for your course? Okay, here's the deal. If you are bringing in less than $10,000 a month, I recommend you take my challenge. That's what I recommend that you do. I shared the link again. If you're over $10,000 a month, then please send me an email. It's chat at kizzyparks.com. Chat at kizzyparks.com. That's my email. So, uh, thanks. I thought you was a sexist for a second. You were so, you're so funny. I was trying to get, I'm a sexist, Lord. I'm, I'm, I am a very... I'm open to everything. As, as long as it's legal, I'm open to it. Okay. Um, Cheryl. Thanks for answering my questions. Good. I love the love. Okay. Alma Trab, my husband works for a government contractor and knows about winning proposal. He's been telling me for, for years that he and I could be government contractors. I want to do it. I just feel overwhelmed. So Alma Trab, I think you what you feel is natural. And Sometimes that doesn't feeling doesn't go away. So right now, I have a gazillion things. Like, listen, I'm gonna even show y'all so you can see I'm not BSing you. And look, I already know my handwriting's a mess, so don't don't try, don't try. Look, this is one list of things I need to do. One, I got a bunch of these. Plus, I have other companies. I mean, and so I can only imagine because I'm, I, I'm, I bet you may have children. Maybe you even have grandchildren or grandchildren on the way. And so the overwhelm is because there's this uncertainty, there's potential anxiety, there's the unknown. And anytime we step out as entrepreneurs, we are stepping out into the unknown. Because that U.S. education programming system, they want us to do what they want us to do. They want us to stay in line, to work, to work for them, and not to step outside of that. To stay in line, to have our little vacation, to have our cars, to have our nice little place to live. And that's what they want us to do. So that overwhelm is natural because there's not an exact road map. And so I can assure you, if this is something you decide to do, you will be successful as long as you speak success. You say you're successful. You say, I will do it. You say that you are going to be successful and you back it up with the steps. That's also what's key. And you can do this on the side. Like for instance, you being here late at night 
that's a sign. Learning, putting in that work so that you can bid on opportunities potentially at night on the weekends. There are, I have in my current coaching program, I have a woman in there who has a full-time job and she's still bidding on contracts. So just know that you got this. It's natural to feel overwhelming. The more wins that you have, oh my gosh, I was, I watched more videos. Oh, I feel more confident. I look, excuse me, on this website, I feel more comfortable. It's just more wins, more wins, more wins. The overwhelm is going to go down. Okay. Mac leadership, awesome transition. As of now, be as of July 1, I'll be available. Okay, good. Reach out. Okay. Pinky's podcast show. I love that. Torn between service contracts and equipment. I won my first contract. That's awesome. Congrats. That's right. Pinky's. I think you wrote, you, I think you wrote, maybe you mentioned that. That's awesome that you won your first contract back in April. Now I want to start hitting the low hanging fruit. Okay. So hit that low hanging fruit. What's the plan? What is the low hanging fruit? I always start with the end in mind. Then what? Then what? What are those steps that you need to take? I went to college for facilities. Okay, that's cool. Facilities planning and management hire me. Okay, well, I, I mean, I, lo I love your, um, uh, the, the bravado, I sense. Navigation, our videos, I love that. I mean, I don't I don't have a need for facilities planning and management. I personally don't, but the federal government does. There's lots of opportunities out there for you. Okay, good. I like the yes, felt you, similar boat for you now, finance for the biz. That's good. I like that. Uh, Devon, if you sell products, how do you go about terminating your profit margin? That one's interesting. It's a com it's a combination of your expenses, the evaluation criteria. And what you're comfortable with. So, for instance, there it may seem weird, but I promise you it's, it's not weird. There are some out there that on their contracts, they may only want a 3% profit. You may hear that be like 3%. There are industries, restaurant and others where they make a 3% profit, but nobody's like, chili is 3%, right? So... <laughs> Uh, it's about what you're looking for, because for some, they're like, look, I just want to make $5,000 a month. That's all I want to make. And that's amazing. $5,000 a month is a lot of money in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the United States and the world. You know, like the average family income is like maybe $55,000 a year. So let's take, an, let's take an opportunity, for example. So... Often on Unison, on Sam.gov, it'll say like, okay, we need a bid for 70 uh, like Logitech mice. This is what we need, right? Uh, I didn't say it was hiring facility managers. I'm not looking for facility managers. I'm looking for trainers, like trainers, like training. And um so you're like, okay, I can get a quote for those 70 Logitech. Well, if they say that they're going to base their decision on the going with the lowest price, then the company who has the lowest price is probably going to be the company who maybe they're manufacturing, maybe they have an exclusive arrangement, they're a certified reseller. And so maybe a the distributor is saying, hey, I'll give you each one of these for $10. And you may think, oh, my gosh, that's such a steal because they're selling them for $19.99 at Walmart. But yet they're giving a reseller the same item for $7. So by the time you add profit and any applicable tax, your price is going to be way higher than this person over here. So. If it's lowest cost technically acceptable, often your profit is just going to be a little lower because it's caught. It's it's what it's 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 this game of winning. You're trying to win. You're rolling the dice and trying to win. So, let me know if, if that made sense for you. Type yes if y'all if that if that resonated with you. Please type yes. What do you recommend going to find a mentor right here? 
That's where you go. But <laughs> no, but let me give you what you look for in a mentor. First and foremost, they've been there, done that. They have evidence. Good. Thank you, Devon. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wait, this is for any kind of mentor. It doesn't matter if it's money. You're looking for a marriage mentor. You're looking for a mentor for your kids. You're looking for maybe a spiritual mentor. Been there, done that, and have evidence. That's number one. That's number one. Number two is, <clears throat> do you vibe with them? You know, do you feel like, hey, this is somebody I could, I'm open to learning from. That's another thing that's important. If you're like, I don't really, uh, that's okay. That's the beauty of the world. There are billions of people out there, you know? Find somebody who you vibe with. The next thing, and this one may come in a surprise, is are you coachable? Because you could find the most perfect mentor and have what I experienced. So, you know, I'd, I'd worked out for a long time. Like at one point in time, I was 300 pounds, and then I'd lost like 110 pounds. I uh, worked out all the time. And then I got in this chapter of my life when I stopped and I gained a lot of weight back. Not back to 300 pounds, but definitely not where I was. And there was this um, trainer who I hired, a trainer, mentor, coach. And he was working with me. And one day he just was like, Kizzy, like, like, <laughs> I was like, what's going on? And he's just like, I know what you're capable of. He's like, I remember how you were when you were working out before. And he's like, you're, that person's like not there. You're not here. And, you know, at first I was like, F him. What do you mean I'm not there? <laughs> but he was right. He's like trying to give me the tools. He's showing up. He's there. He's fit. He was um, an older gentleman. I, I think he was maybe in his six. I don't know. He looked the same. And like 10 years had, yeah, 10 years had gone by. So I don't know how old he was. He, he's, he's like aging in reverse like me and probably most of you out there. And, uh, and I was like, but he's right. You know, he's showing up. He's, he looks amazing. He's fit. He takes really good care of himself. And you're paying to meet with him and you're not doing what you need to do at all. I wasn't coachable. So it wasn't a good fit and it sure didn't work out. It was not any fault of his. The other thing is you want to make sure that mentor is really available and can mentor you. Because there's a lot of people out there who've been there, done it, they have the evidence, but it doesn't mean that they're the right person to mentor you. Like there, there may be something in them where they just can't do that. So uh, I'm an amazing mentor, but it may not be the person for you. I'm not for everybody. And that's why it's great that we have choice. So, okay, got that. Food service, trying to change the way chefs think. That sounds good. We don't. Okay, if you're in your challenge, you go over capability statements. Uh, I do talk about them, Lorraine. Yes, I do talk about capability statements. And I did promise, let me get that up here. Just give me a second as I pull that up. But I had mentioned that I would share the executive seat. This is $97. So VIP, in case you're wondering, what makes it VIP that I shared earlier and that's pinned is you get to keep the recording. But hey, for those where you want to invest $97, you get access one hour, VIP gets two hours, and VIP gets to ask me endless questions. So that's what's great. But we do talk about capability statements a little bit. So we talk about a whole slew of things over the course of five days. Um, Cheryl, hoping to put out my first bid tomorrow once I get this vendor resale license figured out. Okay, that's great. I know. Congratulations to Pinky winning. That's amazing. Uh, okay, Robert, what is event and deadline for payment? Um, for the challenge, I will probably cut it off maybe the day of or day before. It's going to be after the 4th of July is when we're holding this. Um, 
I'll train me. You said work for a government contractor. Oh yeah. Like, yes, definitely work for a government contractor. Devon. Yes. Okay. Lorraine. Okay. Cheryl would love to get information on your training. Me as my resume is facilitator. Could be a possible sub. Okay. Terrific. So Cheryl, send an email chat at kizzyparks.com chat at kizzyparks.com. Uh, always looking for facilitators, and I'll have that information passed on to the team. So for those of you who are just joining, watching Restream, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I've been awarded well over $70 million in government contracts, and we're talking about how to unlock federal government contracts. So there's a couple of things I want to kind of close with. First, I want to express gratitude to each and every one of you for being here, because showing up and Going into this realm of entrepreneurialism is hard because that U.S. education programming system does not want that for us at all. They want us to just step in line and do everything they want us to do. So we talked about dynamic small business search. We talked about looking for ways to possibly subcontract. We've talked about the power of mindset. The other big thing is to really, really understand what is it that particular agency is looking to buy. Oh, also Lorraine, thank you. Like the video, share the video, subscribe. Please do all of that. Please, please do. It's super important in this space that when it comes to you selling, you gotta understand what are they really, what is it that they're really looking to buy? What is it that you truly represent? What is it that you represent? You know, going back to the, the mouse example, if they're looking to buy several of these, maybe what it represents is, hey, we're doing this because people are coming back into the office. And so we wanna make sure everybody has what they need that you're really aware of what you're really doing because it's easy to be transactional, but when you are a partner, then they wanna do more business with you because then you become the go-to. You're like Amazon. But when it's transactional, then you're like, I don't care where I get it. I'll go to the dollar store. That's where I'll go. Don't matter. Very, very important. Uh, Ghislaine Ada. I'm a veteran, have a startup, don't really know where to start. Will this challenge be for me? Yeah, this challenge is for everyone. It's it, Except if you make over $10,000 a month in your current business, then send me an email. But for those of you under that, this is perfect. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, kind of, kind of take rolling that back. Maybe for those who even make over $10,000. But yeah, it would be perfect for you because I'm actually going to roll out a couple of programs because I will be making an offer during this challenge. And there's, um, I'm looking to roll out a program for amazing people like you where you don't know where to start or maybe you've got a cage code and it's like, what do I do next versus somebody who's like, already out there doing things or maybe won a contract or subcontracted? So that's a really good question because here's what's most important, how I can serve you best. That's what's key. All of the things on here, the channel, my Facebook group, I'll drop that here in a second. It's all ways to serve you best. That is my intent. My goal is I would love to serve a million people, like the old slogan from McDonald's, like a million. No, I think it changed it to a billion people to serve, but to serve a million people to help you achieve the freedom and life that you're seeking through government contracting and other entrepreneur efforts, endeavors. That's what I want to be able to do. Okay, just like you said it again, always looking for facilitators. Yeah, did I misread what you said? I thought you said facilities. Okay, hiring facilities manager. Oh, I see. Navigation R video. Okay, I got you. I'm misunderstanding. 
Yes, I'm looking for facilitators like training, curriculum developers. Yes. So if that's you, send me an email. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now we're on the same page. Um, I don't know. You might have been the only person in the chat for my school for that. I don't know. You might have been. Uh, let's see. Okay, perfect. I love this. I'm glad this is all coming together. What's recommended for beginners? Uh, Dana Yale? No, Danielle. I think it's Danielle. Danielle Boss. Is there anything a beginner should know prior to the start? It's a challenge. So you're going to be challenged. I mean, seriously, this is not just some fluffy, like, oh man, this sucks. Well, all right. You're going to be challenged. There's, there's going to be things that I ask for you to do. Prior to the start, come in with an open mind and be prepared to be challenged. That's what's vital. You don't have to like have a business to be set up on Sam.gov or anything like that. There's no, there's no, I don't know. They didn't go to college for, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that that's, that's the basics for that. So here's a couple of things I'm thinking of putting out some content around like how to register a business, some, you know, kind of um, content around that. If that's of interest type, yes. Cause I haven't put any, I don't think I put anything out there on that. And maybe I even create a business and register it so we can all walk through that process together. If you think that's a good idea, type yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I would like that. So uh, also some things that I plan on doing just, you know, be on the lookout for is the new KSN. Oh, and I, I shared the link for the Facebook group. So I'm going to have this kind of uh, kizzy shop coming out in addition to all these other things that I do and more and more that's coming out to serve each and every one of you. So be on the lookout for that, you know, because the key to unlock federal government contracts is that you're constantly evolving to meet the needs of the federal government where they are. That's what's vital. That's what's really, really vital, as well as to connect. And I want to keep making sure everyone's connecting and that we're partnering and we're able to all move forward because there's tons of work to go around. There's over $500 billion worth of work. So again, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I've been awarded over $70 million in contracts. I appreciate every single one of you being here. I need to go to bed, y'all. It's time for bed. Mm. It's time for bed. So thank you for being here. If you're interested in the challenge, the link is pinned. VIP, VIP always better. And hey, executive is amazing too. The executive is there in the chat. Join my Facebook group. Please do that. If you are a facilitator, curriculum developer, something of that nature, please share your information. Send me an email um, to chat at kizzyparks.com. Chat at kizzyparks.com. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Cheryl. Thank you. Um, Shayma, thank you. Yeah, you, you have, yeah, there's a lot going on there. I love that. I love that. I love that, Shayma. There's so much. Whew. And hopefully I'm saying your name right. And if not, please correct me because I know how I am being named Kizzy Parks. So thank you, Lorraine. Thank you all. And thank you for the, the super chats. Like this is like a first. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, it just means the world to me. It really, really does. Because again, I'm here to help you all. That's why I'm here, especially at this hour when I need to be sleeping so I can get my butt up and work out because I got weight to lose, just like we all have contracts to win. Why? Because we're freaking amazing. Y'all already know. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Everything is possible. Bye, y'all. Take care. You're amazing. Till next time.